I am so excited to show you this product right here. Um, this is a what we call a revolution arrow tuner. Uh, the great folks at Last Chance Archery, um, they're in the great state of Georgia as well as myself. I'm friends with them, been friends with them for a long time. And I personally have been tuning broadheads, tuning broadheads. And we're going to go a little bit, uh, we're going to dive deep in what tuning a broadhead is. But tuning a broadhead for over 25 years, whether it's a fixed blade broadhead, a mechanical broadhead, three blade, four blade, it doesn't matter. We're going to show you how to tune that broadhead. And we're going to debunk the myth of what tuning a broadhead is and what indexing a broadhead is. But this arrow tuner is more than just a broadhead tuner. It offers so much more than that. It is a arrow spinner to check the straightness of your carbon arrows, squaring device for squaring the inserts, squaring either end of your arrows for the knock end, for the insert end. Broadhead tuner, like we said, it has a built-in broadhead wrench. So this thing is more than just your standard, like when you first look at it, it's like, man, that's just an arrow straightener. Oh no, way much more than that. And the features that we've deep dived in there and put into this make it uh, a, a breeze to tune your broadheads. When you're shooting, the last thing you do when you cut that arrow loose, all things out are, are out of your control. Don't you want that arrow to be precision and to be, to be set up precise so that it has every advantage to being as accurate as possible? So we want to take as many things that could cause you to not be accurate, especially with a broadhead, because how many times, let me paint a picture for you, how many times have you started shooting all summer long, you're shooting with your field points and you're like, man, I'm hitting, you know, a baseball size group at 40 yards, 50 yards, I'm shooting good. Time to screw on your broadheads, whether it be a mechanical, whether it be a, a fixed blade, and then you're, especially with a fixed blade, and you go to shoot those in just to make sure you're grouping and your group opens up and you got an eight inch group. We're going to show you how you can cut that group in half or even less, not by tuning the bow, but by tuning the arrow, tuning the broadhead. The leading edge of the arrow is the broadhead, which acts like a rudder and acts like veins, and it steers the arrow. If that arrow, no matter whose broadhead it is, no matter what brand, if this is not perfectly in line with the shaft, hey, you're going to get some bad results. You're going to have some that dip, that dive. How many of you have ever spun an arrow? And if you get a pack of six, you got one or two of them that spin perfect. But those that don't spin perfect got a little wobble to them. This is how we can fix it to make all your arrows a clone. Index to your vein, and we're going to make sure that these are aligned perfectly with the shaft so that you get the utmost performance out of your arrow, your broadhead, the whole combination. And this is the, the equipment that's going to do it. Perfect, perfect for a shop to own. You can charge your consumer, you know, $1, $1.50, $2 to tune their broadheads. This may not be in the budget for the person in, in, in their, you know, basement to buy one of these things. But nonetheless, I think the archery guru is going to want to have one of these. The tournament archer is going to be uh, wanting to have it for the simple fact of squaring your end of your arrows front and back and then also square in the insert. And we're gonna go, we're gonna go through all that. We're gonna show you all this. I just want you to know from, from the start all the things that this does. So when you're looking at the, the, uh, the Revolution Arrow Tuner, you're not just thinking, man, that looks like any straightener I've ever seen. So much more, so many things that this thing does. And I can't wait to show you all the features of it and the stability of it. I know I'm proud to working with Last Chance Archery and I'm proud to finally bringing this to market because this has been a, a dream of mine for years to improve on the uh, broadhead tuner that I've been using for 25 plus years. Now you guys are going to get to use it and, and see how much it helps your accuracy, whether it be your three blade, four blade, fixed blade, um, uh, mechanical, you can tune them all so that you know that you've got a precision arrow tuned, made, ready to go to hit the target, to hit the dot, to hit the foam, the 12 ring, or especially the boiler room on a critter. So let's dive in. All right, first up, we're gonna do arrow squaring. So we've got our dial indicator swung out of the way. 
Um, everything's on a track on this thing, so everything's movable around, adjustable to your era or to your likings as far as, you know, you just loosen something up, move something around, um, and then the way you change out each feature, which this is for aero squaring, you got a diamond cutter on the back side that you can move and change, and then you have a keeper that holds the arrow in place, and then also you can use the, I call this the offset tension wheel, this is what I call the offset tension wheel, can be used for the broadhead tuner and or the uh, squaring device, but you may want to manually do it. So we're going to put this in place. We've already made sure that the, the unit is, is square. we got four legs for stability so that no matter where you're pr pressing or tuning, we have four legs for stability. And then you've probably seen squaring uh, an arrow end uh, a lot of times whenever you uh, uh, cut an arrow or when you get one from the factory, this might not be perfectly squared. But just to check that off the list so that when you're sitting in a tree stand, you're not like wondering, is that, did I square that? Is that knock on straight? This way, before you build your arrow from the ground up, we're gonna make sure that everything is perfectly square. So you pull the keeper out of the way, slide it in. You have two sets of bearings here. And then all we're gonna do is the diamond uh, file is on the, the back side, which is actually going to trim the material. And you just simply get real close. You don't want to spin it down here because actually you're changing it, uh, changing the angle of the arrow. But you can just hold the arrow and, and put a little pressure up against there, turn it a few times. It actually files the material off. Or you can use the offset tensioner and then you simply, you, you press down on it, but then you roll it this way. And by doing so, it's, it's applying pressure here. You're directly over the bearings so that you're not affecting the angle of the arrow. And then you simply roll this and it's, it's providing tension this way to run it into the squaring device. So you roll it a few times and you've squared the end of that arrow. Pick the tuner up, pick the keeper up, flip it over, assume that I've already got this cut, just to double check. Put it back down and you can push down and roll backwards right over the top of the bearing so that we're not changing the level of the arrow. All right, so we've squared both ends. Now, a lot of times people put inserts in. If you got hidden insert technology or something that's inside, you're not gonna have to worry about this too much, but and I've got a bunch of different arrows, a bunch of different broadheads here, but let's take this one and uh, I'm gonna show you, take the broadhead off. Now, a lot of people just assume that you got an insert here that's 15 cent, 20 cent, something like that. And it's like, man, that thing's perfect. Well, may or may not be, but in order to check it, what we do is you put your Sharpie on the insert so that you can make sure that you're taking the material away. Now I've already squared this one time, so it's, it's gonna come out, but just to show you how it works, we're gonna slide this thing in here, just like we did before. And, and, and what I'm doing is, let me explain that. You know, it's like, why is he coloring that? Well, you're coloring it so that when you put it on the diamond cutter, the Diamond Dallas Page diamond cutter, a lot of you wrestling fans will understand that. So we're gonna put it on here to where when you're rolling the arrow, you can actually see the material because it's gonna cut the black away. And then if your insert is not squared or it's a bad insert, it'll show you where it cut away on one side and kept it on the other, and that means that it's flat. But nonetheless, the blackness or the Sharpie mark on there is to gauge your, uh, how much your material you're cutting away. So let's, let's show you how it works. All right, we're gonna use the offset tensioner. You can press down, roll it backwards. You can see the bearing spinning. It's up against the, the diamond cutter. Flip that up. And you can see where we've taken material away. So this thing is perfectly square. So we've squared our arrow and now we've squared the insert so that when we get the ferrule of the broadhead on there, we know in our head, confidence-wise, that we've squared the arrow, squared the insert, and now we've put the broadhead on here. So 
we're checking off things to make sure that our broadhead is lined and tuned. Now we're going to tune it right here in a minute with another um, uh, implement, I guess you could say, or uh, attachment that we're going to put on here. But right now, we've, we've got the arrow in place to where we, we're ready to tune this. Now, as you put your broadhead on there, I want to make sure that people understand indexing an arrow. So a lot of people have said over the years that tuning a broadhead is lining up the broadhead with your veins. Not necessarily, you don't have to line them up with your veins. That's just a good place to start. You can take the broadhead and then you just make sure that all of your arrows are a clone. So if you've got 12 arrows that you're setting up with broadheads, you want the, the, the broadhead indexed in the same exact position per, per every arrow that you're, you're uh, shooting. Now with this, it's just easy with three blade broadheads to line them up with your, your veins. So you want to make sure that you index your broadheads with your veins and they're all clones. That way they're set up, ready to go after you have squared the insert, after you have squared the arrow. So the next step before we, we actually tune, um, you know, and I keep, I keep reiterating that is because we're going to try to change the way people are thinking about that. Indexing is how you line up your blades according to your arrows to make them clones. Tuning is aligning the tip of the broadhead in perfect sequence with the arrow so um, that we make sure it spins correctly, that we make sure that we get uh, the best aerodynamic and the most consistent aerodynamic on every single arrow we got. All right, the next feature is the arrow spinning or arrow straightening. Um, you know, my era, as old as I am, arrow straightening, uh, we used to go back from aluminum. So you take two roller rollers, which everybody sees these, you know, everybody spins their arrows and checks that. But the thing about it is, is you, you, you see that you can, and let, let's get this out of here. We'll move this little attachment. And you see it opens up to where we've got roller bearings and you can adjust the two points of contact, the distance that you want. So let's, let's widen this out a little bit. So you take an arrow and you see so many people, they'll throw an arrow on there and then, you know, they always spin it, you know, and run down through there and they look how it, you, you can see that it's off a little bit, you know, with a broad head on one side or, you know, they throw an arrow in there and, 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 and you, you, that's FOC at work right there. Look at that. Whoa, a little on the front heavy side. So anyway, you, you're rolling the arrow and you're checking the straightness down through here. But then, you know, you have that spinner, but then what do you do? Like, let's just say that it is off. There's nothing you can do. But with the arrow tuner here, we can fix all those things, those little little things that are off a little bit, whether it be squaring the knock, squaring the broadhead, squaring the insert. Um, and we're going to show you about tuning the broadhead as well. Next thing is, is we want to check our arrows. This is the, uh, I shouldn't say next, but this feature of the tuner is you put your arrow in there and we have a dial indicator here. You bring the dial indicator, we're going to bring it into play. So now we've got it in place. This dial indicator is so sensitive it goes down to a thousandths, it reads within a thousandths and it has, it has memory marks right here so that you can see that. So you can go every two inches and watch. Now this arrow is supposed to be within a thousandths. So you start at one end thousands thousands and what I always like to do is is uh, keep your finger over the top of the rollers because if you'll watch watch how sensitive this is just by touching on the outside a lot of people will, will just out here in dead space they'll touch their arrow and it gives you a false reading so you don't want anything to affect the bend of the arrow which would give you a false reading so always when you're doing your spinning keep your finger over the top of the bearings just like that and I usually like to go about every three or four inches and this is what we call culling arrows actually so if you've got multiple dozens you can actually go through and get the exact straightest arrows out of the bunch of arrows that you've got you can see right here in this area it opens up a little bit so from this portion on we're extremely straight but down here towards the end, it, it opens up to a little over a thousand. So what we're going to end up doing 
is uh, naturally this is a full length shaft. We'll probably cut that off. Still usable, but nonetheless, it's nice to know, uh, you know, what each of your errors is going to be. So you, you know, the manufacturer is going to tell you a thousandths is straight within three thousandths, within six thousandths. This this way, you can make sure that your errors are within uh, specs. And everything that you're doing when you're building an arrow, I'm, t I'm telling you from speaking from experience is you're just building confidence. It's like I picked 12 arrows that are extremely straight. Check. I've squared the either end of the arrow. Check. I've squared that insert. Now, uh, with all these features, you're checking off all those rather than just taking a dozen arrows and fletching them up and saying, man, I hope I hit that dot. These right here, you're checking off, you're splitting hairs, and everything that you do to make these uh, arrows, this dozen arrows that you're building, a clone is just tightening that group just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and, and uh, you're, you're taking all the chance or the hope out of it. You're, you're actually physically making sure that your arrows are more accurate. And there's a pride factor with that too, so that when you're out there, when they're done, they're built, it's like, man, I invested all this in there. There's sweat equity in there. There's a pride factor. It's like, I built these arrows. As soon as I cut that arrow loose, it's like, everything I've done is going to make it hit that dot or help to increase it. You still got to make the shot, but nonetheless, I've checked off all the boxes. I've split all the hairs. We're going to be, I know that I've built the most accurate arrow that I personally can. All I got to do is make the shot. And that's, that's a huge, huge, huge pride factor and a boost to your confidence. So this machine will allow you to visibly quantify all those measurements to make sure that it's exactly correct. So we've showed you the dial indicator. Um, yeah, and we talked about the broadhead uh, tightener. So when you basically in the handle, whether it's a three blade, a four blade, or what have you, you just simply slide it in there. Because I can't stress enough how important it is to have your broadhead tight. All right, I'm really excited about this attachment and what this aero tuning does. It's a broadhead tuner. So um, it does so many other things which we've already showed you, but now it's time to tune the broadhead. Something I've done for over 25 years and I'm super, super uh, proud of what we've come up with to, uh, to tune your broadheads and show you. Whether it be a three blade, a four blade, uh, any mechanical, it, you can tune the broadhead to the arrow. And I'm not talking about indexing, I'm talking about tuning. Um, we also, you can check your two blade broadheads, you know, for you trad guys, with, with the device that we have here. You can check the tune of them, but we, uh, for future, we're gonna have an attachment for tuning two blade broadheads. You know, the guys who shoot in the Zwickies and the, the tough heads and the grizzly heads, the, the single bevel stuff, we're gonna have that in the future. But for right now, you can check the tune of them and the straightness of the, the total alignment of the whole era. But um, anything else, whether it be a three blade, four blade, mechanical, we've got you covered. So I'm real excited about explaining this to you guys. So I'm gonna put this attachment into place. It bottoms out, we got it secure. We're gonna use our dial indicator. Now, let's rewind and let's, show, let's, let's start from the finish. Let's check off our list. Okay, we've taken a raw shaft We've squared the knock end. We've already cut it. We've squared the other end. We've checked the straightness through the, um, the uh, arrow uh, spinner to make sure that we've got a dozen arrows that are within the tolerances that we want and that are acceptable. We've got a dozen blanks. They're squared on either end through the arrow tuner. They, we've installed an insert. Here we go, we've got an arrow right here. Installed an insert. We've squared the insert. So we're just checking off all the things that are right. Now, we've got a broadhead. We've installed it, okay? We've used our broadhead wrench that's built in here. We've tightened it, and we've indexed. I can't stress this enough. A lot of people think that the word indexing is tuning. It's not tuning. Indexing is where you make sure that every one of your arrows is a clone to the other, meaning these blades line up the same way in reference to your veins. They don't have to necessarily line up with your veins. They just need to be a clone of each other. However, 
most three blade broadheads or four, four blade broadheads, it's just easier to index it off of the veins. Now what we've done is line this up. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but the, the broadhead and the veins are lined up. This, I mean, it's common sense. This catches a lot of wind um, and it's the leading edge. So we've shot field points all summer long. You screw your broadheads in here and you notice that your, your, your groups open up. So uh, we're gonna show you how we're gonna tune this broadhead. And I, let me explain about tuning a broadhead. This is something, like I said, we've been doing for years and years and years and years, and I'm so happy that, that now we've got something to, to provide to the uh, consumer, to the shop, so that you can actually tune the broadhead. How many times have you ever taken a broadhead, screwed it on there, and you know, it's like, oh man, here we go. I, I know every year that it's gonna, my groups are gonna open up, but I'm gonna do my best to make sure that these things spin. You know, we all take and put them on the table and we spin or, you know, you put them on your hand and you can just feel that wobble. And this one's got a little wobble to it too. Now, that's not the fault of the arrow. That's not the fault of the broadhead. That's not the fault of the insert. We've got a four part system. That's what I like to say. You've got the arrow, you've got the insert, and you've got the broadhead, and then you have a glue tolerance of the inside diameter of the shaft. So we can't expect, or we would like to think that manufacturers could all get together and get that, but you got one brand of broadhead, uh, an insert that most of the time is 20 cents from across the country. I highly recommend getting a, a, a better quality insert um, because that is the, the number one support system for that broadhead to make sure that arrow does its job. Moving on, then you got the insert, then you got the glue tolerances, because once that glue is setting up inside there, if that insert is off a little bit, it's gonna make this be off. Now, I don't know which one's gonna be the problem on each arrow, but I know that I need to fix it. So with that said, we tighten it down, we get it indexed, and then what we're gonna do with uh, our attachment in here, it's a real small ball bearing, and we lift up the dial indicator, and then what you wanna do, this is very, very important, is you take the dial indicator and you want it directly over the insert. You don't want it way out here. And actually what I like to do is I like to have these two points of contacts a little bit closer. And something I forgot about is also included, if you wanna make sure that your arrow is level, you just put this little level that's on there and you can see that we're level. But if you needed to adjust that, you just come back here on the backside and it's dovetailed and then you get the arrow level so that we are absolutely precise. So we're gonna see how far out by thousands because we can measure that. You're only as good as you can measure is with the dial indicator, we're gonna take this and move it over the top of the insert. We take the offset tensioner and you roll it. Okay, now we can see, in my opinion, within two thousandths is, is acceptable with the broadhead aligned with the shaft. But what we're gonna do is if, if the broadhead's inside there, you're gonna see that it's running about 3,000. So what you do is you go to the high side, which will be on the lower side. You go to the lower side and you, you just lightly hold the tension there and then you take the straightener and you press down on it. Look at that. You can use the offset or you can do it with your finger, either one, but always you wanna roll it over the top of the ball bearings. And watch that, as I'm letting up, it's, it's coming out, but look at that. Complete rotation, and that one's less than a thousandths now. Now, you're asking yourself, well, what happened there? You can't bend carbon. True, but between the glue tolerances or we're actually lightly bending the ferrule, we have made sure that that tip is a square in the middle of the arrow so that it'll spin perfectly. And that is gonna make sure that those broadhead blades are perfectly square and give this arrow every possible chance to be as accurate as it possibly can. And we're building clones so that we can repeat that through other arrows. Now granted, you may need to tweak the tuning of your bow a little bit, but checking off those pros and cons and making sure that this thing, we know that we've got 12 arrows because we can measure that with a dial indicator. We've squared everything. 
we've aligned the broadhead, we may have, you know, like the way to get to that, achieve that is you're going to ask yourself like, well, how's that doing that? You might be slightly bending your, your ferrule, but if you take this off and put it on another arrow, it's not going to be, it's not going to be, you'll have to retune it. Let's put it that way. You have to retune the broadhead. So this is installed. This is indexed with the veins and this broadhead and this arrow combination is ready to go meaning it's as straight as it can be, and we're gonna to try to duplicate that over 12. Now this is just one style broadhead, so we've done this. I wanna show you on this one, which we've had done, uh, we've already indexed it, we've already tightened it with our broadhead wrench. This is another type. This one's pretty straight to begin with, but I mean, it's, 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 already, it's already acceptable. I'm gonna see if I can get it just a little bit more. And just, just, lightly, just lightly press on it. That's gonna be money right there. So that's right at a thousands. So I know that that broadhead is straight. And the cool thing about it is, is if you're shooting fixed, pin, fixed blade broadheads, you can shoot them into the target, shoot them into the target, pull them out, check them, retune them if you want to, and or change the blades out and retune them. And then you know that once I have one tuned and I've already squared everything, I've, I've just put myself back into a clone. I've got sharp broadheads and I go to the woods. All right, now mechanical. You're saying like, why do you need to tune a mechanical? You, you honestly, the reason mechanicals are so popular is because people got tired of, mechanical uh, offers uh, uh, several things. One, it's tight to the arrow, so it's aerodynamic, which takes away the problem that we've had in the past with a fixed blade broadhead of, you know, acting like a, a steering or an extra set of veins on the front, so it makes it dip and dive. We got tired of inaccuracies, we got tired of that, so you want it more aerodynamic, you get it close to the blade so we don't have to worry about that. And when it gets there, naturally it has a lot larger cut than your standard, you know, inch and three sixteenths uh, of most fixed blade broadheads. This one will be a two inch cut when it gets there. But it's compact in flight, so it, it's, it's checking a lot of boxes. It's like, man, I don't even need to tune my broadheads. You don't, you, the need for tuning the broadhead is nowhere near as much as it you would with a fixed blade, but you can never be too accurate. Accuracy is always going to win. A slow hit is better than a fast miss. So with that said, we make sure it's tight in there. You can still use your the broadhead tightener right there. And then we put this in the tuner. And even if it is a, uh, a mechanical, it just sure is nice to know that your arrow is straight. And see that one right there is just a thousandths and a half. I mean, between the broadhead, the components and everything. So this one don't need anything. I got lucky. That's the one out of 12 that you do and your spin is perfect, this one is right. But if it was off, I can straighten it just like what we did on the fixed blade broadhead. But this one is ready to roll. Honestly, I pulled this out of my quiver, so I, I might have already done this one on uh, before. That might have been done before season, about September. I should have put a date on it. But nonetheless, I know that this has been squared on either end. The insert's been squared. The, the broadhead is aligned, and the broadhead is, is tuned. So all these things, I can sit there, no anxiety. The arrow is tuned, it is right. And it's all done by all the attachments that are included with the Revolution Arrow Tuner by Last Chance Archery. So soup to nuts between level and stability. I'm so proud of this right here and I'm so proud of, to work with the guys at Last Chance Archery to bring you the Revolution Arrow Tuner. Broadhead tuning finally to the market. Uh, if you're a shop, look at this as an investment and charge your consumer. The guy that can't afford this, he may come in and you can charge, charge him a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars per shaft, tune his broadheads up, and uh, you'll more than pay for it in no time at all. So uh, there's a lot of a lot of advantages to this. Way more than just a broadhead tuner. Way more than just an arrow straightener or an arrow spinner. There's so many features on this, and we've got more coming down the pipe. So I'm very very proud to introduce you to you, the Revolution Arrow Tuner. AKA broadhead tuner as well.